Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another video on ECG interpretation. My name is Dr. Wajid and I have done my residency in cardiology. This is our case for today. Firstly, a brief history of the patient. This is ECG of a middle-aged lady who presented to emergency department with palpitations. Before starting the discussion, as always, I want you to pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself so that at the end of the video, you can compare your findings and diagnosis with the discussion done in this video. Now, starting with the discussion, one prominent thing which you can note on this, this ECG is presence of tachycardia here we can see that the heart rate is around 300 150 the heart rate is around 140 to 150 beats per minute so this means that this is a tachycardia now whenever you find an, a tachycardia you must ask yourself two questions first is whether it is a regular tachycardia or it is an irregular tachycardia and the second question would be whether it is a narrow complex tachycardia or wide qrs complex tachycardia so here as, as we can see that that the duration of QRS complex is less than 3 small scale. You can see that the duration of QRS complex is less than 120 millisecond, which means that it is a narrow complex tachycardia. Similarly, we can see that the distance between QRS complexes, which is also known as RR interval, it is regular. The R waves come at regular intervals. So we can say that this is a narrow complex regular tachycardia. Now, next, next question is what are the differential diagnoses of a narrow complex regular tachycardia? Firstly, we can have a narrow complex regular tachycardia in sinus tachycardia similarly in case of atrial flutter with fixed av block we can have a regular narrow complex tachycardia and third is proxismal supraventricular tachycardia now our aim is to differentiate between these three entities firstly we look for presence of sinus tachycardia for a rhythm to be sinus, there should be upright and prominent P wave before each QRS complex in inferior lead, especially rhythm strip that is lead 2. Here we can see that there is no P wave before QRS complex. The absence of P wave before QRS complex means that this is not a sinus rhythm. The next differential will be the presence of atrial flutter with fixed AV block. For an atrial flutter to be present, there should be P waves at a rate of around 200 to 400 beat per minute. So we will search for presence of P waves. As we can see here that after each QRS complex, there are negative deflections. Each QRS complex is followed by a negative deflection which is atrial activity or retrograde P wave. However, the rate of this, these retrograde P waves is around 150 per minute and there is one to one conduction. So the chances of atrial flutter at a rate of 150 is less likely. So we are left with one differential that is 
proximal supraventricular tachycardia. In proximal supraventricular tachycardia, there could be two types of pathways. One is AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, in which the accessory pathway is located within the AV node. And second is atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. In that case, the accessory pathway is located outside the AV node and it is called WPW syndrome. The definite diagnosis of presence of either AVNRT or AVRT is on an electrophysiological study. But there are some clues on ECG which can help differentiate between these two entities. Firstly, if we have a baseline ECG, we can find the presence of delta waves. That is short PR interval with upward slurring of initial portion of QRS complex in case of AVRT or WPW syndrome. Secondly, when we have a patient with palpitation and tachycardia, an important clue which helps in differentiating between these two is the, is the duration of RP interval. The RP interval is a time period from the start of R wave till the start of P wave. A RP interval more than 100 millisecond is in favor of AVRT, while a RP interval which is less than 100 millisecond it suggests AVNRT. Here in our case, we can see that the RP interval is just less than 100 millisecond. So this is most likely an AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. What is the treatment of an AV nodal reentrant tachycardia? First of all, if the patient is young and there is no contraindication to carotid massage, we should try carotid massage or Valsalva maneuver. Both of these can break the circuit and revert patient to sinus rhythm. And if patient does not respond to Valsalva maneuver or carotid massage, then next step would be to assess whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or hemodynamically unstable. In patients who are hemodynamically stable, we can try AV nodal blocking drugs that is adenosine and beta blocker if patient is not an asthmatic. While if the patient is asthmatic, we can give IV calcium channel block. Similarly, if patient is hemodynamically unstable, then we DC cardio over the patient. For as, as far as long-term treatment is concerned, for patients who have recurrent episodes of supraventricular tachycardia, the treatment, the ideal treatment would be EP study followed by RF ablation. While the patient who do not have frequent episodes of supraventricular tachycardia, we can use preventive measures such, such as avoidance of caffeine, stress, and lack of sleep. Similarly, we can use oral medication like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. So this is all for today. Hopefully you like the video. For more videos on ECG, kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned.